Welcome to the next installment of the Moto Trailer Project. The black portions of the walls you see here are at 22 inches high, and that is there. It's actually bed liner that I sprayed in, a uh, Herculiner bed liner. And I sprayed that in so that when we're moving dirt bikes around here in the trailer, we're not going to scuff up the walls, leave black marks, things like that, because uh, that bed liner is super tough and will take that uh, abuse uh, relatively easily. I was going to run Raptor liner because that's a much tougher uh, solution. However, um, I thought it would be a little bit overkill, so I didn't. I used a Herky liner instead. Linex, of course, would be the premium option, but I'm trying to do this DIY as much as I can. Anyways, so I had a little bit of overspray uh, on the floor there. You can see around the edges of the Herky liner. No big deal because I knew I was going to be coming over it with a sander. Uh, the floors, of course, are that... OSB product that they run in these uh, cargo trailers all the time um, and I want to encase this in a candy shell if you will of two-part epoxy uh, several layers of it to really make this bulletproof because we do a lot of Seattle riding in the rain and the mud and all that good stuff so that's the whole point of this step of the project is to get that floor encased and the drive up ramp encased in that really tough uh, bulletproof uh, epoxy So here's the sander I use. It's a DeWalt uh, cordless 20 volt sander. Uh, I'm a big fan of DeWalt tools. Got a lot of their stuff. And uh, so this is no exception. Really nice to not have to worry about chasing an extension cord and everything else when you're trying to do a project like this. And you can just spin around freely, uh, which I did. So this has a little bag there on the side that collects the sawdust really efficiently. You can also take that off. It's a twist lock. Uh, you can take that little filter bag collector, if you will, off and hook it straight up to a shop vac if you want, which is kind of convenient, and I'll show that in the next picture here. And there you see the bag, it just twist locks right off of there, super easy, collects dust really, really well. A couple stats and features about this sander if you're interested in it, uh, serves me really well. It is the hook and loop style with the easy to exchange Velcro sandpaper pads, which is really nice. Um, so I like it, it's a nice little unit. Yep, like this? it's that time. I've seen lots of people do this project with those big floor sanders. Um, honestly, I got away with doing the little hand sander just fine. It's really not a lot of area. This is simply a 6x12 trailer, so no need to get crazy. It uh, worked just fine. Actually, it did a great job knocking down all the burrs and rough spots, which is exactly what I needed it to do. So you can see I'm going over the edge. Getting some of that overspray of the Herculiner. Uh, don't need to make this surgical grade. It's all good. Just basically knocking down the rough spots and getting it ready for the two-part epoxy shield. This is uh, the gray color I went with, with the additional chips. I ordered the additional blue, black, and white chips online. Got a lot of them. Um, and then proceeded to broadcast them on top of the two-part epoxy, the gray, once we laid that down. Mama Bear did a great job helping me with that. The company I got the chips from was called Rust Bullet on Amazon, and they had lots of different color combos. If you're a Harley guy, they had a Harley mix with orange and black. Um, and Kawasaki, they had lime green. You get the idea. So if you're doing a project like this, definitely hit them up on Amazon. So while the epoxy is still wet, you're going to broadcast the chips on it as heavy as you desire. Again, I went on Amazon and bought about, I don't know, 10, 12 pounds of extra chips versus the one pound that came with the kit because I wanted to go real heavy with the paint chips for that look I was going after. Uh, and you're going to have a lot of paint chips. They're going to be sitting up. They're going to be jagged. There's going to be shark fin looking ones, uh, which are not ideal. Uh, so you're going to let the epoxy set up and harden just enough that everything's kind of glued in place. Then you're going to come back over it um, with your spike shoes or cleats or what have you. You're going to come back over it with a metal scraper of some kind to knock everything down and tame it down and get it nice and flat. I used a large aluminum uh, dustpan to just kind of go over it, but you could use like a drywall trowel or lots of different uh, methods. Even a stiff squeegee would get the job done. But you basically just need to clean up all those jagged paint chips and, and get rid of the ones that are not playing nice. 
So once you get your shark fins all knocked down and everything's all good to go, we're going to go ahead and bring in the rock solid clear. Uh, this is actually, this kit's supposed to do a two and a half car garage. I want to do two layers of gloss clear. Uh, so technically my six by 12 trailer, including the drive up ramp has five car garages worth of, um, product in it, which is just insane, but it is what it is. So I will note that the best way to apply this is to simply push around a puddle of it with a squeegee, uh, gives you a nice thick layer of it. And then once you get the distribution you'd like, then go ahead and come back through with your roller and then do your back rolling. And this will get rid of any squeegee marks, lines, it'll give you a nice even distribution and an even texture. So you back roll it, get rid of any of the lines you wanna go ahead and erase and get that nice even distribution and the finish you're looking for. And then we're gonna go ahead and come in with this uh, particulate product that's basically a texture enhancer or a grip enhancer. And it's a really fine sand basically. Uh, and you're going to go ahead and distribute this. Uh, I personally chose to go with the aggressive option, which is where you just kind of Johnny Appleseed it and just kind of throw it out there uh, and have it stick to the wet epoxy. And this is gonna give you the most aggressive grip texture. This is gonna give you a grip texture that's similar to like a skateboard uh, if you put it on super heavy. And of course I had to buy extra grip enhancer in order to do it this way uh, because normally they just give you one little tiny pouch that you're supposed to mix in with the epoxy directly. Uh, but I, I, again, chose to have the more aggressive option because I want this stuff to be very, very solid footing in the trailer when we have wet dirt bikes and everything else going on in here. So again, just kind of spreading this out. Um, I will note too that if you put it on too thick in any given spot, you're gonna lose some gloss luster. So just be aware of that. Uh, but again, I would rather have uh, guarantees that nobody's gonna slip and fall rather than have to worry about, uh, you know, the gloss texture so much. And when you're doing this project, you're gonna be dealing with epoxy in multiple stages of setting up. A lot of times it's gonna be tacky or wet. You need to be able to walk on this without ruining the finish, and that's where these come in. So with these spikes here that just strap onto an existing pair of shoes or boots, you're able to have a very, very small amount of surface area contact with the floor. So you can actually walk around it freely and not mess up the finish that you've been working so hard on. Uh, unlike, of course, standard standard uh, shoes would do. So uh, you can use an old pair of baseball cleats as long as they're metal, or you can get a set of these. I got these on Amazon. I think they were $25 or $30, and they worked fantastic. And you could use them for a trailer or a garage, regardless of what your project is. But uh, pretty good. I like the way that came out, for sure. Blue and black and white chips. And then I went really heavy with the texture additive. Uh, so this stuff feels like uh, grip tape on a skateboard. So no slipping and sliding in the rainy weather here. So it's coming along. Got a little cleanup to do on the bottom of the sill here. And I'll, of course, get that all cleaned up. Got some. These aren't epoxy in. They're just loose chips that were flying around. I got to vacuum that out. Cut in that black line at the bottom of the wall there, like I said. But... All in all, pretty, pretty happy with the way that turned out. And this stuff is bulletproof. Tell you what, see, it's got a nice finish to it. Definitely, definitely well broadcast, well distributed. Um, and I am really, really happy with the way that turned out. So I'm going to go ahead and flip up the door, let it soak up for a solid cure, and then on to the next step of the project. There you see the rear door flipped up in the closed position. Just a continuation of the floor, of course, which was the idea. So really, really happy with the way that turned out. Way, way better than raw OSB. That is for sure.